Just watching certain scenes from the movie Gravity was scary, let alone imagining what would happen if you really ended up in the cold, endless void called space without knowing if you'd be able to go back. But let's say you're really up there. You're so excited about your first spacewalk. It sounds risky, but it's something astronauts on the International Space Station do quite often. It's easy to understand why accidents at work are way scarier up there than some regular 9-to-5 job on Earth. But that's why you have more training and special equipment to keep you safe. First, astronauts are always attached to the spacecraft with tethers, so they don't float away like a helium balloon. It may seem like a spacewalk is such a big deal that the ISS needs to stop when the astronauts are out there doing their thing, but it's not like that. If the ISS were ever to stop, it would fall straight down to our planet. So once an astronaut is in a stable orbit, they stay in that orbit, unless some new force acts out. The first spacewalk wasn't as simple as those done later. It was performed in 1965, and it lasted 12 minutes. Two men set out on a mission. One of them was supposed to float in space for a while while taking pictures. But things went wrong. His spacesuit expanded too much making it hard to move. He started to feel overheated, so he had to let some oxygen out of his suit, which was very risky. He could run out of air or get sick like a deep-sea diver. Getting back into the spacecraft was tough as well, but he somehow managed to do it. Then more problems came. The spacecraft started spinning, oxygen levels rose dangerously, and there was a risk of an explosion. After a lot of struggle, they made it back to Earth, but landed in a random forest surrounded by wolves and bears during a snowstorm. It took a rescue party to find them. Not a very encouraging story to listen to while you're waiting to go out. But cheer up, things have improved since then. Hundreds of astronauts have taken spacewalks without any serious problems. So here you are, whizzing right along with the giant ISS. Your first spacewalk goes almost flawlessly, so you can enjoy the view a bit. It's hard to control the way you move, but tethers still do their job, so you can focus on your task. Until you realize they failed. How did they untie? You notice you're floating off in some random direction. There's nothing you can hold on to. Your body is weightless, and it has started to spin around. It's so frustrating when you can't take control of your movements. An astronaut named Scott Kelly described this unpleasant feeling in his book Endurance. He was turning around and upside down in the darkness and could see nothing but what was right there in front of his face. It was like a scuba diver floating in murky waters, totally disoriented, with no way of telling which direction was wrong and which one could be right. In space, you can't kick or flail to change your course. It might be fun floating inside a spacecraft with zero gravity, playing and fooling around, but seeing just the endless void filled with stars in the distance and knowing what could happen makes it frightening. And now you're getting closer to Earth's atmosphere. It might seem like the safest option because it makes you feel like you're going home, but in reality, you better hope you'll change direction. If your angle and speed are wrong, you might re-enter the planet's atmosphere and burn up. Not a good deal. NASA trains astronauts for such situations, so you know what's your next step. Activating an emergency jetpack called SAFER. This tool is designed to help you stabilize and move in space. You don't even need the tethers. You can control the movements of your jetpack with a small joystick. Finally, all those hours of playing video games will pay off. These jetpacks became an inevitable part of the spacewalk package almost 30 years ago. So far, no astronaut has had to use one during a spacewalk. Whew! You're back on track, and you're moving away from Earth's atmosphere. You're getting closer to the ISS, flying manually. Oops! These jetpacks have one big flaw. They have a limited amount of fuel, and your safer has just run out of it. Okay, take a deep breath. One of the most important things every astronaut has to learn is to be prepared for literally anything. That's why they go through pretty intense training sessions, so they can remain calm even in very stressful situations. A long time ago, NASA would choose astronauts from test pilots who went through harsh training in the jungles of the Philippines without any help, so no instructions or supplies. 
Later, they implemented a special training regime with outdoor exercises in different climate environments and even underwater to simulate conditions in space. Today, astronauts are trained to work in teams to stay focused and calm while handling difficult tasks. For instance, when they needed to fix the Hubble telescope, astronauts had to work for more than 8 hours in the harsh conditions of space to remove a broken part. It was a frustrating task, plus the gloves they had to wear made things harder. But they still did it. They also train in a giant water pool in Houston, which is a pretty good replica for the ISS. That's where they practice spacewalks and try to repair things while being underwater all the time. The water makes them feel weightless, while their suits are heavy enough to mimic the effects they could experience during spacewalks. You also need to have sessions with aerospace psychologists. They help astronauts handle stress and stay mentally strong. They check astronauts before, during, and after missions, helping pick the best candidates for spacewalks. Not everyone can go through these harsh conditions. Out of 16, only 10 get chosen. Even though so many safety measures are taken, space is still an unpredictable place where we don't have as much power as we'd like to. Back in 1973, during a spacewalk on the Skylab space station, two astronauts were in a very risky situation. They were out in space fixing things, but they didn't have the same handy jetpacks like astronauts do today. They could only rely on safety tethers. Suddenly, the solar arrays they were working on moved unexpectedly and pushed them out of their position, almost sending them drifting off into space. Thankfully, the safety ropes did their job. Strong, resistant to heat, and attached to astronauts' waists, these tethers can hold a weight of about 881 pounds. This accident happened before SAFER came into use. When up in space, a lot of things can go wrong, and sometimes, even astronauts' training and equipment can't help solve the problem. That's where the Mission Control Center on Earth jumps in. Thousands of people work on Earth to support the astronauts on the ISS. But if the communication system doesn't work, or no one's close enough to help, that's where the rescue operation stops. You just continue to move in a random direction, waiting for the 7.5 hours of air you have to run out. Feeling hungry? Unfortunately, you can get nothing but some water you have in your helmet. Maybe you'd stop spinning at some point. The view would be fascinating. Hmm, you could watch the Earth rise and set about five times, depending on where you are. And while you'd be getting farther away, an Earth would be turning into a small dot lost among asteroids, stars, and space debris, a random picture would come to your mind. A stunning sunset at the beach, the sound of waves, and your favorite pizza. Now, it's so far, it almost seems like part of another dimension. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.